Let's take a look at the numbers for this fight, the tail of the tape. And one key number, of course, is the age of Victor Postal. Now, 35, you're more than a veteran, and some people wonder whether he's still an elite fighter. But I was there and announced that fight, and I can tell you that the way he performed against Josh Taylor shows you that even at 35, he's still got a very good skill set. With the official ring introductions, here once again is Jimmy Lennon, Jr. Wu fans from the cosmopolitan of Las Vegas, we bring to you our next attraction as Premier Boxing Champions presents a world title eliminator brought to you by TGB Promotions and Mayweather Promotions in association with About Billions Promotions and Showtime, sponsored by Brooklyn Boxing. This bout is sanctioned by the WBC, President Mauricio Suleiman, Supervisor in Attendance, Jill Diamond. Introducing our three judges, scoring from ringside. From Las Vegas, Nevada, Robert Hoyle. Also from Las Vegas, Patricia Morse German. And from Montreal, Quebec, Canada, Benoit Roussel. Introducing to you our third man to the ring, he'll be giving instructions after the introductions, Robert Bird. All right, fans, here we go. Ten rounds of boxing scheduled in a WBC super lightweight world title eliminator. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the red corner, wearing black trunks with silver trim, joining us from Toulouse, haute garonne in France. He weighed in at 138 and one half pounds. His record, 21 wins, two losses, with two wins coming by way of knockout. Tonight, making his U.S. debut, please welcome the WBC number three contender known as The Problem. Introducing Mohamed Mamoun. And his opponent across the ring, fighting out of the blue corner, wearing silver trunks hailing from Kiev, Ukraine. He weighed in at 139 and one half pounds with a record of 30 wins, two losses. He has 12 wins coming by way of knockout. Currently ranked the WBC number four contender. Please welcome the former WBC super lightweight champion of the world, introducing Victor, the Iceman Posto. Gentlemen, you had your instructions in the dressing room. The only thing I'm going to remind you of now, when I say stop, what that means is stop whatever you're doing, give me a clean break. Protect yourself at all times and obey my commands at all times. Anything on the belt right here is going to be good. If it's on the belt here, it's going to be good. Gentlemen, let's do this. Robert Bird, the referee. Ten rounds in the 140 pound division. Victor Postal started 28-0, but has gone 2-2 two two in his last four. Has been floored four times in his last five fights, all by Southpaws, like his opponent tonight, Mamoon. And the bell, round one, Postal in silver, trunks Mamoon in black. And, and Al, when we talk about Postal's opposition, including Terrence Crawford, who is a switch hitter, it's it's interesting statistic that he has been dropped four times in his last five fights by guys who are lefties. It is intriguing, and that's his, that's been the one little chink in his armor. Left-handers have given him a little problem. The question is, is Mamoon on the level of those kind of left-handers? You know, Postal, uh, kind of a theme this evening, our fighters going back to trainers. Well, he is back with Freddie Roach, who he trained him from 2014 to 2016, and now he's back with Freddie watch Roach, feet, and he feet. hopes that's going to really help him. The Moon's best watch win came in October 2017 on the road against England's Sam Eggington. Decision was split, but most ringside observers thought it should have been unanimous. Pauly for Mamoon, his third fight at 140 pounds after spending most of his career at welterweight. Yeah, he's an ex-European uh, champion at welterweight without Eggington win, got him the European title, so he's he's fought some decent opposition at welterweight, so he, he believes he can be stronger at the super lightweight limit, but of course, uh, Victor Postal, a big super lightweight. You don't even find many welterweights as big as Victor Postal. Postal 
allowing Mamoun to circle the ring. And this is what Mamoun does. He is very much a boxer, you know, crafty fighter, keeps a high guard, throws some wide looping punches sometimes, but his defensive skills are considerable. You talk about Postal working with Freddie Roach. Mamoun has Roy Jones Jr. assisting him as well. And the boxing great telling us that Mamoun has to take control of the fight, keep control. And right now, it's uh, Postal that's dictating oh, the pace no, 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 early no. here in this fight, Polly. Yeah. And Roy Jones couldn't make it tonight, so in the corner, he watch has Sofiane. Watch your feet, watch your feet, let's go. Um, I'm uh, glad you're saying that name, <laughs> Polly, not me. <laughs> it's me too. Assisting as head trainer in the corner, and Sofiane is the, uh, an Olympic silver medalist in the 2016 Olympics. They spar a lot, and they train together a lot. Yeah, I that's right. Roy Jones Jr. helping the moon, giving him advice, and probably not liking the way he took that. No, no, no. Left and right from Postal. Big left hook from Postal. He's not always a left hook artist, but he has a very good left hook. And against a left-hander like this, it's a it's something that works. The tricky thing about Postal is, you know, he, he's very good at maintaining his range and fighting at this range. Mamoun yesterday told us about how he beat Eggington, who is a very tall guy, but Eggington is a guy that I fought. He doesn't fight at height. He likes to come in and bang. But Postal is very good and very adept at maintaining his height and uh, fighting at a range that can make you uncomfortable because he's so tall. Yeah, they're different kind of tall fighters. There's a double right hand as Mamoun ducks down. Gets hit by Postal. So good start for Victor, the Iceman Postal, here in round one of this 140-pound tilt. And the keys to victory for these two fighters. We will start off with Victor Postal. And yes, the Iceman has come up. He will control the distance, as Paulie has said, uh, in this fight, and is already doing that very well with his jab and his lead right hand. Now, he has a very good right hand to the body, used it against Josh Taylor, as we said, also a lefty. And the Victor Postal right to the head, which Lucas Matisse felt many times when Postal won the championship, is a great punch. If you look at Freddie Roach, give him instructions. For Mamoun, it's got to up the volume. And you saw what happened in round one. He just kind of didn't do much offensively. He needs to up that. Stay off the ropes. If he gets on the ropes against Postal, he will be raked over the holes. And the right hook is a good weapon for him. He tends to slap with that punch. He's got to throw it with conviction. Now, you got to give me props. I've had two theatrical references already in this show, Marl. Oh, that's my gimmick, Al. All right. I, oh, sorry. References. I, I apologize. I'll never do it again. You'll be hearing from my attorney. <laughs> this is America. All right, round number two, and we've got Mamoun looking to try to establish that jab, the straight left off the shoulder of Postal. And, of course, the 140-pound weight class with Terrence Crawford now at 147 pounds. You have Ivan Baranchik with a claim to the title, Jose Ramirez, Mo Hooker, Kirill Relic who is uh, defending his title tonight against Regis Progress. So opportunities here for Postal and Mamoun to make some waves. And Mamoun, what he does is he makes these fancy moves. And a lot of times, you know, he's trying to get Postal to get up his height. But he's got to also learn one thing. When you're making, when you're the kind of guy that makes these fancy moves, you have to make sure you can punch up all those fancy moves, you know? So you're giving different looks. But if your opponent starts to realize all these looks you're giving, you can't punch off of them, he can get a little bit more brave. So Mamoun, very clever. And yeah, he, a lot of times, he makes guys give up their height. But Postal's a little bit too small for that. So he's going to have to be more aggressive uh, and open up things himself. Another a nice right hand by Postal. The big issue is that Mamoun has never fought a fighter on the What's level of Postal. Postal's by far the best he's fought. Both fighters not known for their power. Again, just two knockouts for Mamoun, 12 for Postal, but Postal is getting the better of the exchanges and continues to dictate the offense, although that was a nice counter there by Mamoun, but Postal becoming more aggressive here with less than a minute and a half remaining in the second stanza. I mean, Victor, Victor Pauls is an ex-world champion. I mean, he, he, he lost the title to uh, Terrence Crawford, am I right? So, yes. So, so really, that's the only bad fight he's yes. had. And of course, he, Although he was in tough all, against that, not Jimmy of as well. I don't know if he had thought uh, could have gone the other way. And he beat Matisse. You know, he's, he's been, he's been at, the, at a high level and then competed well at a high level. Less 
Pierce in a minute remaining here in round two. Postal with the stiff jab through the guard of Mamoun. Yeah. Mamoun's trying to land a little counter right hook, which would be the right punch for him to throw, but you can see he's not throwing it with uh, his body behind it, and it's kind of a slapping effort. There it is. You can see it's not, it's not effective at all. And also, Postal's beating him to the punch in a straight line with the jabs and the straight right hands. So you, you, if Mamoun's going to land that hook, he's got to show him that up. And look at Postal very cleverly cutting off the ring there and not letting Mamoun go all the way to the right. Less than a half minute remaining in the second round and Victor Postal continues to dictate the pace, utilizing an effective jab. And now Mamoun trying to mug Postal as they clinch. So another good round for the former 140 pound belt holder, Victor Postal. Francis Felix de Jesus will translate for us. Uh, what about having Joel Casamayor now as your main trainer? How much has that helped you? ¿Cómo te ayuda tener a José Casamayor como tu entrenador ahora? No, eh, Joel Casamayor para mí es una inspiración muy grande. Representa mucho tenerlo en mi esquina, ya que conoce ya eh, la escuela con la José muy bien y, eh, y quién mejor que él para estar en estos planos de estelar tan grandes en esta gran noche. It's an inspiration to have Joel in my corner. He's, of course, a, a Cuban idol for me, and um, to have him in these big fights is extremely important. Is this a must win to stay in the mix? Obviously, yes or yes, the future depends on this. What color is your hair? Yellow. Yellow, <laughs> yellow amarillo. Yellow. Okay, amarillo. There we go. Back out to you, Mora. <laughs> All right, Jim, and of course, uh, the only color, well, it's a form of yellow. They are both interested in Bar Barthelemy and Easter is gold. They want the gold. And, uh, well, these two have their sights on, on gold as well. Here, round three of this 140-pound affair, Victor Postal, former belt holder in this weight class against Mohammed Mamoun. And uh, so far, it's uh, Postal's jab, his combination punching, and it's just the overall work rate that has been the... the the, f the real difference. And in the last round, he threw 62 punches, only 21 by Mamoun. He landed 18, did Postal. And so, um, you know, he's been pretty accurate with his punches and uh, has been much busier. Mamoun has thrown a total of 35 punches so far in this fight. That's not going to get it done. And some of that is also psychological. Postal it imposes himself in the ring with it and controls the real estate and forces Mamoun to just kind of have to take these secondary approaches to throwing his punches. And, it, and psychologically, it's, 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 it's causing Mamoun a lot of doubt. And that's why he's not throwing as many punches. One minute gone here in round three, and we mentioned, oh, there's a nice uh, left hand that lands for Mamoun. Postal has uh, Freddie Roach back in his corner out, but he also really he wants to show reverence for his original coach and father figure, Alexander Polischuk, who really showed him the, the X's and O's of boxing. Yeah, and who was his chief trainer in the last uh, fight as well, but he knew he felt he needed front Roach. Let's take a look at the total number of punches here. You see the huge difference, not just in what's thrown, but what's landed. And uh, Mamoun, I, I said it in the keys, he had to up the volume. He's not been able to do that for a couple of the reasons that Pauly referenced. And, um, and, and Postal, it's a great advantage when you can be very offensive-minded like this and never have to get inside and put yourself in harm's way. Well, coming into this contest, Postal was landing and throwing under the 140-pound yeah. average for total punches, but uh, Mamoun, he had been throwing for the average coming into the fight, but I guess that's also a testament to what Postal's been exactly. able to do. Exactly, yeah, precisely, Mom. Or as Ed McBann would say, you are correct, sir. Well, there you go, another one out, wow. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get, get that letter from the attorney. <laughs> well, tonight's show will culminate, of course, with the important matchup at 135 pounds still to come. Robert Easter Jr. and Robert Arances Bartellamy, but Postal now looking to get a little more aggressive, but it's uh, Mimone with a, a wrestling headlock. And Mamoun has been able to do nothing to take away the confidence of Postal. You know, you land a good shot or, or just, you know, do something that's going to confuse the, the momentum Postal has going right now. And, and if he doesn't do something to make some kind of adjustment, this is the way it's going to go. You know, they said, uh, he was trying to say they've been working on that right hip to try and land as a power punch. Nothing tonight. And even when it's landed, it's almost been in a yeah. slapping motion. So exactly. he, he needs something behind it or he needs to turn it better. Very good, very 
Freddie Roach happy with what his man is doing. Well, this happens with lefties and righties, we all know. Uh, Postal stepping on the foot of Mamoon. And then later yeah, on, we talked about the right hand of Postal, and there you saw one there, but here you'll see a better one. Um, Postal has an excellent hand, this time a lead right hand, right in between. And there's Mamoon trying to land that right hook we talked about. It wasn't thrown well, it was thrown too late, it didn't get there. Three rounds, it's Mamoon. No problems against Victor Postal. Postal, who has had championship success at 140 pounds, and he now no, leans no, in no. on Mamoon. No, 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 no doubt. That's not wrestling, that's box. You know, against lefties, sometimes landing your jab is a struggle, but in this fight, Postal has landed 22 of the 76 jabs he's thrown, uh, according to show stats, and that's a pretty good job against a lefty for a right handed fighter. Postal peppering Mamoon with those shots. Mamoon starting his training when, well, at the age of nine, but officially started taking it serious when he was 12, had about 80 amateur fights for Postal. He started at the age of 12, had 220 amateur fights. So, different class. Typical of Eastern European school of boxing. Of course, but of course, with Sidley Lomachenko also from the Ukraine, Alexander Usyk, Alexander Vostik. So, the Ukrainians are coming. The Ukrainians are coming. Yeah. <laughs> and they come in with all this experience, and it really helps them. Oh, man. Postal continues to just score upstairs against Mamoun, and oh, Mamoun oh, wants oh, to turn oh, this oh, into a rough and tumble push affair. Down, push down. What the, the problem so far is that Postal is showing us he's kind of on another level at Mamoun, which is what was feared by many people. Nice counter right hand upstairs by Postal. Mumu's trainer said they thought Postal was over the hill. Uh, I could have told him, having done the Josh Taylor fight, that that was not the case, and they're seeing tonight that is not the case. Postal would be over the moon if he defeated the moon. <laughs> yes, he would. You are correct. Here in round four, it is continuing to be Victor Postal, although there's a nice some head movement pulling from the moon and landed a nice jab. Yeah, but he's, he's still not enough to deter Postal. He's not landing clean enough to, to, to really cause doubt, even there. A little wide out the hook. How can he tighten it up? How does he... Got to shorten up the shots. Even if, if, a little earlier in this round, he threw a nice counter. Nice pass delivered by Postal. And the moon was off balance. Understand it not being called. That. Short left uppercut to the bread basket by Mamoun. Less than 30 seconds left in the fourth. That was actually a nice little body shot by Mamoun. I probably should do a little more of that. And he does go back to the body with the left hand. There's one to the oh, counter right by Mamoun. So the uptick in offense here in the latter stages of the fourth frame. I got you, I got you. That's all. Dr. Tim Kukenbook is translating the French spoken in the moon's corner. Mohamed, you have to go. No, you have to go. You look at it. Box now, man. You have to go. 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 Yeah, if you have, you have to go forward, you have to do more work, you have to, to box it, so. well, Again, some of the footwork uh, that we see with in is evident in the, the last round. They, their feet get hooked up and the moon almost goes down. That was a good effort that landed. Back yeah. Also. Very, very tricky to referee some of these fights. It is. The lefties and righties. 
because of the feet. This is round at number five. We are scheduled for 10 at 140 pounds. Moro Ranello, Al Bernstein, Pauli Malinaji ringside. Joined by Brian Custer, Jim Gray, Steve Farhood, and the crack Showtime Stop. Championship Stop. boxing crew. And we're in our second contest, a triple header here from the Cosmopolitan. The referee, Robert Bird, continuing to warn Mohamed Mamoun for his infractions. Mamoun has been down twice in his career, both from right hands, and that's close to the what best weapon, and he's landed some, but I'm going to say, I think the left hook might be the better power option for Postal, because when he's landed it, it's been impressive, and I think he should throw it a little more. And another weapon in his arsenal, the jab, has been very effective. Landing, uh, well, it's only 27% when he's outlanded the moon dramatically, and the moon has thrown very few jabs. But I think for a righty to land that well against the lefty with the jab is good. And now one of your keys was controlling the distance for Postal. has been doing a good job of that. Yeah, very much so. And he's, it's, that's his strong suit. Here's the right hook from the moon, trying to get in over the jab. Yeah, bounced off the, the shoulder to the Postal, then score neck, effectively. Minute and a half here left in round five, and sloppy exchange by Mamoun Paul. Oh, yeah, unable to really set him out, him out. up and shorten those punches like yeah, you said. Yeah, he's trying, he's trying, but it's his Postal's offense has been much needed. Oh, good body nice shot by body shot by Postal, you're right, the But you see, right after, hand. after Postal throws a punch, you see his position, he's always great. Mamoun throws punches, and then he's yes. has to reset because he's all over the place after he throws a combination or throws a punch. Postal remains dangerous even after throwing a punch, whether he lands it or whether he misses it. If it were an ice surface, Postal would be an Olympic caliber figure skater tonight while, uh, while Mamoon at times looks like Bambi on ice. <laughs> That's true. There's a jab from Postal. Mamoon was looking for the check hook, but way out of range. 30 seconds left in the fifth. there from Postal. And you know, Mamoun, for all of short, his offensive shortcomings, is very good at slipping punches and blocking them. And that's, you know, that's his best suit, strong suit. But the, because he doesn't remain in great position, when he makes those punches miss, he's not able to yeah. counter. When you're able to make a guy miss and remain in good position, it maximizes your opportunities to counter. Let's go back to Jim Gray. All right, Mamoun here with Robert Easter, Jr. Uh, Robert, how have you reacted and responded to your loss against Mikey Garcia, and how has that changed your approach to this fight? Um, you know, we went back to the drawing board, me and my dad, and um, we just worked on um, perfecting the basics. You know, going back to the fundamentals, footwork, range, distance, and uh, things like that. And uh, took a little time off and spent time with my son, and um, it was no longer. I was right back in the gym. You mentioned your dad. How important is he to you, and why did you decide to have him back in your corner and replacing Kevin Cunningham? Um, my dad never left, you know, that situation with Kevin Cunningham, you know, that was uh, another family, you know, trainer that we had at Open Arms to, uh, to his facility, and um, we tried to take advantage of that, and uh, we came up short, but uh, me and my dad took it back home, and um, um, like I said, got back to the bases and got back to what we do best. We look forward to talking to you after the fight. Good luck, Robert. Thank you. I appreciate it. All right, Moro, back out to you. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Definitely a family affair for both Robert Easter and Rancis Bartellamy. Bartellamy and his older brother, Jan, helping him out as well as the man he looked up to, Joel Casamayor. That's your main event. But right now, we begin the second half of this 10-round affair at 140 pounds. Victor Postal, former belt holder at 140. He's in silver while Mohamed Mamoun making his American debuts in the black truck. We've referenced the number of punches thrown. It is this uh, a stunning statistic? Mamoun averages 58 punches, as we pointed out. Per round tonight, he's throwing 20 punches per round. So, and one of, is one of the problems Mamoun has. Here he's on the inside, he's getting rough, and he's not going to get a lot done. But on the outside, he's typically an in and out fighter. You watch him fight in and out, in and out. He hops in, he hops out. Against a tall fighter, you have to make an adjustment. It's harder to fight in and out because when you're out, you, it's a lot harder, harder to jump back into range because he's the taller guy is doing a better job of controlling the range in this fight. All right, at 
the uh, midpoint of this 10 round contest. Let's bring in our unofficial score, Steve Farley. For a moment, you ask, what have the judges seen from Mamoun so far? In the third round, he applied a headlock. Good, good in wrestling, not in boxing. In the fourth round, he tackled Postal. Good in football, not in boxing. So I'm going Postal. I think it's uh, well, I hope very, you don't go postal, Steve. very easy to score 5 0 for Postal. <laughs> All right, we are here in round six, and of course for Mamoon, you mentioned, Paulie, the, the height advantage of Postal. Mamoon felt that his speed would be able to negate that feeling that he's faced taller guys before. Here's what I'm trying to explain. Mamoon has happy feet. Here, he's got to hold his ground when Postal punches. He's got to slip right for where he's at so that he, he, gave, he makes Postal get up his height. And when he throws in, he can counter more he has. Instead, Mamoon is jumping in and out. So when he gets out, he's not able to get in the ring to throw his punches. He's got to hold his ground when Postal punches. When he gets out, he's not able to get in the range because Postal's too tall. You have to counter a pole guy a little bit differently. Under a minute remaining here in round six, and, and Al Bamoon, when he throws punches, completely puts himself off balance. Yeah, it's the positioning that Powell talked about, and there was a perfect example, Mark. He threw the left, the left hand and got hit with the right. And Postal remains efficient, continues to score upstairs, content with his pace and the distribution of his offense. Oh, straight right hand by Victor Postal. It was one of the things when he fought Josh Taylor, who of course a quality fighter in action tonight, trying to move ahead uh, as a 140 pounder. He was able to land that straight right hand. There's no room with a nice right for a change in this fight. And another combination that scores for Postal as well as we head to round seven, scheduled for ten, and again Mamoon trying to avoid the punches. That we were talking about. Here we'll take a look at the jab setting up the right hand. Look at how wide that right counter right hook is from the moon. That is simply not going to get the job done. And he's taken right hands uh, many times from Postal because of it. Now there he uses the jab as a range finder move and does get in a straight left hand against Postal. That was one of the few good offensive moments he's had in the recent rounds. There's round seven scheduled for 10 in the 140 pound weight class. Postal and Mamoon pieing at each other. Mamoon misses with that left as Postal with the reach advantage. Looking for the jab. That left hand caught Postal in the upper chest area. Again, the jab of Posto, which has been such an important uh, headline in this fight. What's impressed you the most about Postal thus far, Paulie? It was just discipline, you know, he's, he's kept the game plan, he's been successful. Uh, he hasn't needed to really make any adjustments because Mamoun hasn't made any. But uh, he hasn't gotten overconfident, he's still sticking to the game plan and, and sticking to his fight, to the fight advantage that he has, which is fighting at this range right here. Yet continuing to pressure Mamoun, but not smothering himself. Another jab lands for Postal. Timing. Well, mean, the, the shot of uh, Mamoun. You know, in the last 23 bouts for these two fighters, there's only been three stoppages between them. Uh, so, and we're seeing that as we are in the seventh round, even though Postal has dominated this fight, not been able to knock Mamoun down or hurt him badly. Well, there's, as they say, pal levels to this sport, and uh, Postal appears to be in a different yes. class. And we're looking at the video going into this fight, that's what it seemed like. The question was, could Mamoun step up somehow and be better? Quite beautiful up to the Postal. And again, the one-two combination. Lands for Postal as Mamoon smothers Postal.
Oh, so Momo just needs different dimensions. Like I said, he's trying to fight in and out. He, he's had, when he's got to draw Postal in but hold his ground and slip punches. The only time Momo's holding his ground is when he's keeping his gloves up. But if you're going to keep your gloves up just to take shots on the gloves, you have to come back and fight and throw punches. Boy, it's it's very hard for Mamoon to to keep his balance. Yeah, and the second thing Mamoon has to do is shorten up his punches. If there's two things that Mamoon has to do when he goes back to the gym after this fight that he can learn is shorten up those shots and and learn a different way of setting up punches besides being in and out. Being in and out is, is, is a good way to set up punches, but sometimes it's not the only way. You need other other variations at, at a world-class level to set up your punches. Yeah, Mamoon suffering two losses early in his career, both uh, on points back in May and November of 2013 in his native France, making his American debut tonight against Victor Postal. And he is being outclassed by the Iceman. Well, here's how you can be personally notified and never miss a Showtime boxing event. Postal has landed some very, very good left hands, and we will get an example of one again. There's the, 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 the well, he's setting it up, and then he jab after uh, playing with the jab, fainting with the jab. And that jab has been such a supreme weapon uh, for him. He's landed 48 so far in this fight of 185 thrown. This is round number eight. It is a WBC eliminator. The champion is Jose Ramirez. Number one contender, Josh Taylor, challenging Ivan Baranchik, May 18th. And Postal Mamoon want to set themselves up for an opportunity at a belt. And well, Mamoon is, oh. Was there a clash of heads? But elbow, elbow. Oh, it's an elbow. Right here, let's go. Is that a cut? He's pawing at his eye, we'll yeah. see in a moment. Mamoun fractured his left hand in a victory over then and beating Emiliano Dominguez in January of 2018. He was actually dropped in that fight, came back to win. In his last fight last October, he outboxed fellow Southpaw Frank Petitjean. But he's getting up boxed here tonight Watch by Victor Postal. Watch your feet. Referee warning them about their feet, of course, with the orthodox softball dynamic. And uh, Mamou oh, wants to break, turn him into a street fighter. Yeah, except he's ill equipped for that because he's not a big puncher, so that's, that's part Sesame of the street fight. A Sesame Street fight. <laughs> you know, the interesting thing is Mamoun has gotten himself to this point and won a bunch of fights because he's been able to be a good slick stylist against lesser kind of options. Nice left uppercut on the inside by Barrent, or on, make that postal. Let's go, let's work. And, and let's part work. of that is now he's facing a fighter on another level and it's not enough for him. Who, who do you like at 140 pounds right now, Paulie? The, who's the, the, the guy you think is the, the class? Because it is kind of open with Crawford moving up. There's very good fighters there. Where somebody's, uh, there's no one that really stands out yet, but Regis Progray for me is the most impressive. But there's nobody that has taken a mantle yet. If I, if I had to pick somebody, Progray for me is the guy that stands out the best. Look at the hematoma over the uh, right eye of Mamoun. And that's probably from that uh, elbow they were complaining about before in that bird cards to the, to the officials. Man, just no, no real defense there upstairs by Mamoun as he tries to block the shot. Fight. They will. They will pronate it properly. He got leverage on them, and they landed. That's the first time he's done it. And that, Watch your head. More of that was important. And yet he always appears off balance when he's throwing yeah. punches. Also, also looks like he has blood on the side of his head. That's probably from a clash of heads or elbow yeah. too. On the left side of the scalp. Right. right. Yeah. 
Oh, so this is with that one two as we head to the penultimate two round of this 10 round 140 pound fight. Mohamed, Mohamed, on aura pas 50 chances comme ça, il faut la saisir. Tiens Mohamed, ouais, mais les autres on les perd. Okay, you Mohamed, il faut lui faire mal, tu vas le traiter le bras là. Mohamed, Mohamed, ton bras vers là, je le prends. Mais il faut que tu sois le buste en avant et bien, bien assis sur tes jambes, Mohamed. Il faut faire mal maintenant. Si tu veux gagner, il faut faire mal maintenant. Using that jab very effectively, and that's where the elbow, though, probably hit the eye, and that created uh, the problem for the moon. And then the combination punching by Postal. He has all those punches. You know, he threw some nice uppercuts, good short left hook. I actually think if he threw more left hooks in this fight, he would have had a chance to stop my moon. Round at number nine, Victor Postal, Mohamed Mimoun. 140 pound weight class is Postal walking down Mamoun, Mamoun along the ropes, trying to utilize his footwork. Postal pawing at him with the jab. Victor Postal, you know, he's had signature wins against Lucas and Tisse, Celtic Aydin, where he used one uppercut like the ones we saw to knock him down and, and, and win that fight. Uh, and at 35, I think, granted, Mamoun is not a, a, a top 10, 140 pounder, but we're seeing that Victor Postal still has a lot to offer at 35. Official score, Steve Farhood has Postal pitching a shutout. And Mamoun has only thrown 231 punches so far over uh, eight plus rounds. And that is just not going to get the job done for him. Stop, 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 stop. Postal spent two years in the Army, graduated from college in Kiev with a major in physical rehabilitation and training. His twin boys married to Olga and uh, Mamoun, also a family man. Married with two children. Those are places where you don't get caught with the gloves. Those are a few rides. Elbows, headbutts, forearms, things like that. So it is a street fight after all. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's just yeah, not going well. He, these cuts and, and even uh, hematomas are happening uh, from things that, you know, they're clearly happening from things that are not punches. Yeah, but in this round, Postal landed some superb right hands. Oh, yeah, it doesn't yeah. take away from the fact no, that punches are away. I, but I agree with you. That those things are not from punches. How much of that is attributed to the way that Mahmoud moves? Yeah, of course, it does lefty. It's a lot of things. Lefty versus righty matchup uh, always causes a little bit of weird balancing uh, problems. And then, of course, the openness of Mahmoud yeah. will be the Sharp jab, good combination put together by Postal. Right up on the inside, continues to pepper Mamoun. Mamoun very wide with his punch. Misses with the chopping counter left hand, does Mamoun. Watch your head. Fifteen seconds of the ninth round. It's going to take a miracle for Mamoun to come back in this fight, but that's the, the beauty about boxing. All it does takes is one punch, and we're going to the tenth and final round. Mamoun not known for that. No, exactly. Won't do a champ. Two cut knockouts. Well, here's a man known for his power and his superlative skills. Errol Spence Jr. undefeated him. What a master class against Mikey Garcia in his last outing. Dare I say, you shouldn't be surprised or have your eyes opened by Errol Spence, but he opened up a lot of people's eyes with his Yes, tomorrow he did it in the way he won. It wasn't just the power of being the true welterweight against Mikey Garcia coming up in weight. The skill sets that he showed in that fight were extraordinary. And and he boxed extremely well. What impressed you most about Spence in his last fight, Paul? Uh, he, he, he controlled the fight. Um, his jab was really, really impressive. Uh, he you know, has a southpaw. You don't always see guys using the jab as well as Spence did. Uh, controlled the, control the fight, boxing.
boxing first. It almost like he wanted to make a statement that he could box the guy who just uses natural bigger size. And then when it came to the later part of the fight, sure, he did use his bigger size to bully this morning. And well, speaking of boxing, good sign of sportsmanship despite the rough and tumble affair at times. But Victor Post still putting on a, a boxing clinic against Mohamed Ben Moon. Again, utilizing the jab here early, gauging the distance, probing, fainting. We talked about Mamoun's uh, lack of volume. Uh, in Postal's case, he averaged, his four-fight average is 40 punches per round in his last four fights. Tonight, he's averaging 57 punches a round, so he's been busier. Yeah, uptick in yeah. Postal's output. We needed it. Uh, the Mamoun camp needs a drastic uptick in his offense, both in terms of numbers and effectiveness. Yeah, and the problem is, as we pointed out, only yeah, two knockouts. Two. He's just not a power pitcher, so it would take something uh, really dramatic to, for him to turn things around in this last round. And the other thing that makes that less likely, too, is uh, Postal being such a clever uh, fighter and, uh, and, and such a good ring technician. Yeah, very professional performance time by the last time. The folks from the, the Roach camp that talked to us said, you know, the, the thing about him is there's no drama. He's, 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 he's a hard worker, he's a professional, he's a business coach, coaches just like it's a business. It's always been the way Postal goes about uh, boxing. Yeah, always had a mature approach. I used to spot Postal back in 2012, 2011 when I was at Wild Card Gym. And even then, he had the, yeah, you could tell he had the goods and he yeah. you know, had a pretty bright future for himself. It's the first time you revealed that to us this yeah. week. Well, that was on a need-to-know basis. It didn't come up. <laughs> we should have asked. Yeah. I fought a couple tall opponents in late 2011 and early 2012, so he, he was good work. Yeah, I bet. Well, Postal's work ethic and the fact that he's fought only four times in the past three-plus years has allowed him to remain relatively fresh into his mid-30s, according to Freddie Roach and Al. You, you talked about it already. He feels that if Postal remains as committed to the work as he has been, that Roach will stick with him for as long as he wants. Yeah, and I think he says he wants to fight three more years, Postal. Whether he can, I don't know, but uh, but he's certainly fit, and uh, and, and I think he, he feels like he wants to get in there against these top welterweights. And I mentioned the performance against Taylor. And even in losing, it was a good one, and we know Josh Taylor is one of the better 140 pounders. the Josh Taylor fight, you know, he didn't do himself a disservice in Europe with that performance. So, Victor Postal, as many expected, proving to be in a different class than Mohamed Mamoun, as we enter the final 10 seconds of this 140-pound fight, Victor Postal continuing to land upstairs through the guard, Mamoun with a clubbing left hand, but it's been all Victor Postal tonight. Inside the ropes and take a look at this fight in microcosm and what we are going to see for the most part with Victor Postal are some of the right hands that we talked about being important in this match. Lead rights like that one, setting it up with the jab in that case and avoiding the counter right hook. Again, the jab which landed. And, by Postal. And these are great examples of the shortest point from A to B is a yes. straight line and not around. And then you see here, most of the time, Mamoun trying to go wide and, and Postal beating it to the, to the shot every time because his punches are straighter and shorter. Yeah, we talked about that at the beginning. Uh, Good physics lesson from Pauly. Yeah, I, I appreciate that from <laughs> Pro Professor Pauly. Professor Pauly! I wasn't good in physics in high school, no, so no, I'm, I'm learning. learning. Neither was I, but boxing taught me a little bit, and boxing Here's taught me that particular point. And I wasn't great in math either, but I can read these numbers. <laughs> and uh, th th what they tell you is that Postal was so much busier than Mamoun, and clearly accurate enough. Not that 27% of power is fantastic, but we've talked about Mamoun being a good defensive fighter, so those numbers show you why Postal dominated this fight. Good sign of sportsmanship there. Mamoun showing respect for the Hall of Fame trainer, Freddie Roach, who has to be 
Pretty pleased with his pupil's performance tonight. Yeah, that's a man that believes, I'm sorry, Mauro, no, that's please. a man that believes he's poised for one more run at, at 140 pounds. Yeah, I was just going to mention that. It looks, you know, body language speaks volumes. Postal even doing a, you know, feeling the groove here tonight at the Cosmopolitan. And the man who's always in the groove is Jimmy Lennon Jr. Ladies and gentlemen, after 10 rounds of action, we have a unanimous decision. Here are the score totals. Judge at ringside, Patricia Morse Jarman sees it 98 to 92. Benoit Roussel scores about 97 93, and Robert Hoyle scores at 99 to 91. All three in favor of the winner of the WBC Super Lightweight World Title Eliminator, Victor the Iceman Postal. So the 35-year-old Victor Postal picks up his 31st victory as he improves to 31 and 2. For Mohammed Mamoun, he drops to 21 and 3.